Hey there, Blade Gang. <laughs> we got a blade for you today. I lucked out and got this $200 plus dollar Kaiser for about one ten less 10% discount at White Mountain Knives. And guess what? They're still out there. As of November 23rd. So go and get yourself a Thanksgiving gift. Not sure how many are left. This knife is a production version of this knife. The John Gray Custom Thuck Frame Lock Knife. Three and a half inch. And um, at Blade HQ, this Custom is out of stock. But that's what that THUK stands for, Tactical Hunting Utility Combat Knife. And if we look up this one, which is called the GPB-1, the GPB-1, those initials or acronym stand for Gray's Pocket Brute Number 1. <laughs> <laughs> is it a brute? Well, let me tell you, it weighs seven ounces. And when the box came, I thought there were two knives in there. <laughs> That's how large this sucker is. Look at how tall that blade is. The grind doesn't go all the way up, but it reinforces this four millimeter blade stock. Three and a half inch blade, eight and a half inches overall, and a 0 0.51 handle thickness. Very slim for the size of the knife. And a very interesting kind of, uh, I call it a spoon shaped titanium clip. It is a frame lock. We have uh, two barrel spacers, standoffs wide open construction got a slot here and it's a beast no jimping on the top but you have a blade that falls below the finger line so it's going to make a good utility knife as well as a tactical combat ever at the ready in your pocket sword kind of a deal <laughs> we have these dished angled thumb studs there's the name GPB1 John Gray is the designer and I think Kaiser did an excellent job pulling this off minimal branding small branding S35 VN steel you gotta give it a little wrist because it is riding on washers as near as I can tell. That's going to make the blade a little more stable, a little stronger in hard use, because bearings can be a little bit on the delicate side and give you a little bit of blade play. Not on this one, though. I have uh, worked it and oiled it up to where it is drop shut with a flick as much as you could want and opens with a flick of course you can roll it out no problem and the lockup is on the thumb studs it is not locking up on any internal pins very smooth action very positive very confidence inspiring in the hand it is a full size knife Three and a half inches, that's going to fool you because that blade length doesn't really impress upon you how tall this blade is. This is, and I should tell you how tall it is, from this point to the blade, we've got an inch and three quarters. That's crazy. Very unusual giant pivots on this blade and I was able to adjust it using 
that. No problem. Gonna fit right in there if I can catch focus on that area. Either way. So it's not a Phillips. It's a cross, we'll call it flat bit. And I think the cross is just for design, but the coin fits in there perfectly. I've done it with a nickel, a dime, quarter, whatever you got. Ergonomically, very nice handle with a finger groove and the ability to choke up on the kind of a platform. You could call that a blade choil. It sort of is. Um, sharpening choil, the uh, edge comes right out to the beginning of that. You got your uh, grind ending right about in the middle of that. And that on this side we've got just a beautiful dome shaped pivot. Nicely polished. The uh, finish on the blade, hard to tell, but it's kind of a stone wash, a mild stone wash, and yet fairly shiny. You can see it's pretty reflective. It's neither a satin nor a full stone wash, but kind of a somewhere in between. Let's see how the GPB-1 stacks up against a griptilian. You can see that it is longer overall by about three quarters of an inch and it is definitely taller. <laughs> we put it up against commonly known as a pretty large knife, the Rap 1 by Ontario, we have a comparable length, pretty much spot on. But again, look at the size of the handle, I mean. Ginormous compared to the uh, Rat 1. And of course, the weight is going to really, uh, I mean, it's a heavy knife. You, you're probably going to know it's in your pocket, but it's fairly slim. It doesn't carry real deep. But um, the pocket clip's got nice contouring, nice entry and exit points in the way that it tapers. Feels good. Like I say, confidence inspiring. I mean, you can put the middle finger in that finger groove, plenty of room for your index finger here, and you're pretty locked in with a lot of, um, a lot of pommel left over. Take another little cruise around here. I didn't waste any time with measurements during the video today, so not going to be a really long video by any means but there's a lot to see here and picking this knife up for a little over a hundred bucks or right about a hundred if you uh, use my discount code old sword at white mountain knives I'm not going to guarantee they're going to be there by the time you get there but I know there's at least one still available they don't give you an inventory, but um, they were not sold out, and this is the day this arrived. I think we could call this, and I know Blade HQ calls it a Warren Cliff. You could sort of call it a Warren Cliff with a belly. Very much uh, terminating in kind of a spear point there, with a swoop here on the blade that's usable by your thumb, so if you choke way up. Your thumb lies right in there. Again, no jimping, but plenty of thickness. And I feel like I could exert a fair amount of force with my uh, thumb in that position. Come back on it a little bit like this, and you've got more reach. 
whether you're in the hammer grip or more of a saber grip. Just a really neat and unusual knife at about half of what it came out there for. He did have an SLT as well. Unfortunately, that's gone, but I do see SLTs out there on Chicago Knife Works for in the hundred and a half range if you're looking for one of those. These are pretty popular knives amongst some collectors. So uh, check them out. Hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. We'll catch you soon.